Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we're gonna build some engine mounts for the Alferrari. All right, so those of you following along last week will have seen that uh, the engine was mounted in the car, but it's just sitting here. It's actually sitting on a, um, on a piece of timber in the front, and I've got another couple of blocks of wood that are sort of holding the gearbox up at the back, but it's just sitting here in the car. It's not in its final uh, resting place, and obviously that is not how it's going to stay. It can't just sit on blocks of wood. Um, so my challenge today is to get this lined up properly and um, get it sitting in its sort of final resting place so I can build these engine mounts. Now, um, I'll show you what sort of engine mounts I'm gonna build later, but I'm thinking to start with, I actually had like a 19 mil board in the car, and I'm thinking I can actually probably bring that down to about 10 mil clearance at the bottom. So that's the first thing. I need to get this engine as low as possible, and um, that's my first, first port of call is to change that block of wood over, see if I can get some, some 10 mil um, mounts to sit it on, and we'll go from there. All right, well, um, before I start messing around lifting the engine at the front of the car, I wanna make sure the gearbox doesn't fall. At the moment, the only thing holding it in is this piece of timber is just sort of wedged under the edge of the gearbox. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trim this extra piece of steel to sit through across like this, and then just gonna strap, wrap a strap around this, strap around the gearbox, and this piece of steel will sit on these uh, um, seals and hold the gearbox up so I can mess around with the front. So let's do that. All right, so uh, now what you're looking at is, this is down on the passenger side of the engine, and uh, this is where I have to put uh, an exhaust manifold and also engine mount. So uh, it may look a bit tight, but um, there's actually quite a bit of room there. There's, there's plenty of space on this side. This side is easy. So this is the driver's side, and this is the side where we're gonna have lots more issues. So in here, we've gotta fit uh, an engine mount, and an exhaust manifold up here somewhere, going all the way back to the back, but that's not where it ends. Okay, so now I'm down underneath the car, looking back the other way, and uh, you can see the exhaust ports on the engine there. So uh, in this side, I've got to fit an exhaust manifold, as well as the engine mounts, as well as uh, this massive Raceworks AN fitting here coming out of the adapter plate. This is for the dry sump return from the, uh, from the oil tank, which I'm gonna have to uh, make up as well. And somewhere in here, I've also got to fit steering. So there's a lot to think about and there's a lot that I've been pondering for a while and I've got a plan of attack. But uh, first things first is uh, getting back up in here somewhere and having a look at what I'm gonna do about making some engine mounts. So a lot of you might be questioning, how can I make engine mounts with only 10 mil of movement? No, I'm not going solid mounts. What I'm doing is uh, they're going to be quite they're going to be quite rigid. They're going, they are not going to have a whole bunch of movement, but they are going to have some movement in them. And basically what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going with uh, cotton reel style mounts. So these are the ones actually that uh, out in the skid factory has used in the past. Um, basically, I've just gone and bought these bushes. These are bushes for... Um, Leaf spring mounts for, I think they're a Mitsubishi Triton Ute or something. Here's the uh, the part number here. There's a part number. Um, basically, they're off the shelf leaf spring uh, mounts. And what I mean by cotton reel mounts, like this looks a bit like a cotton reel. Basically, what I'm going to do is these are the exact right size to get some off the shelf. This is this is about 40 mil, 42 mil um, OD pipe that I just got from the, the steel supplies, and these are a perfect fit to fit into the end of this pipe. So there'll be a, like a T-piece that I weld this onto the engine. And then on the body of the car, I've got this nice big chunky square tubing. I'm going to make the, uh, the car side mount out of this. So this is just gonna be a, a U-shaped mount. I'll cut the top off and trim it up to shape, fit it to the car. That is the rough plan for the engine mount. So let's start uh, measuring up and doing some fabrication. All 
so here we have, uh, this is the body side engine mount. So this is the part that's gonna go to the, the original uh, engine mount on the chassis. That uh, That's ready to go. I'll, I'll round off these corners and stuff later. I'm just sort of quickly getting it ready so that I can trial it. Um, obviously I've got my bushings for the uh, that are normally for the rear leaf spring and this is uh, the piece of tubes. I'm gonna cut a piece of this out now to uh, properly mount these bushings inside of my bracket here and then I've got to make up the Ferrari side. Okay, and we have a finished uh, initial engine mount. So that's, uh, that's the unit basically there, that's uh, the start. So now I need to get a piece to bolt onto the Ferrari engine and then I need to weld the uh, that part to this part. You'll get it when I start welding it together. All right, so now I need to make the Ferrari side of the engine mount. This is the factory one, so obviously this bolted onto the engine and then there was the rubber uh, sort of bushing that was in here on that. Obviously this is the bit that I'm remaking. I'll uh, lay it onto my nice big heavy steel plate, mark it out, cut it out. That should be pretty straightforward. All right, so I've spent a bit of time now um, getting the engine into the exact right spot that I want it. I've measured everything. I've got it level in the engine bay. Um, I've got the gearbox lined up with the tunnel, but I've realized that to be able to do the engine mounts getting it in and out, I really need to be able to lift the engine completely out, which means I need to get the gearbox off. So to get everything lined up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some bits of tape on the engine, bits of tape in the engine bay as refer reference marks to get everything so that it gets back to this exact same spot the actual engine mounts are quite simple. It's just getting uh, into it is the is the issue because obviously there is not a lot of room. It's quite tight. It's not Project Binky tight, but it's it's tight. So um, I'll uh, I'll keep uh, persevering with what I got here, but uh, I think we can sort something out. All right, I'm happy with my mounts. Uh, I think it's time to make a second lot now that the engine is out. Um, I worked out, I realized I've got my lift table, so that's what I used underneath the car to uh, actually lower the gearbox down. Much easier method than the, uh, the dodgy thing I had set up with the jack before. Anyway, so uh, time to make another two of these, and uh, then we can start working out how we're gonna actually put them in the car. All right, so I've got my plates made up. These uh, go on here, but the um, uh, the studs I've got on here are far too long. They're gonna interfere, so I'm gonna get out my uh, stud extractor again, pull these studs out, replace them with bolts. I might put shorter studs in them at some stage, but for the time being, um, I'm gonna just bolt straight into the, uh, into the case, and um, we'll uh, get these things mounted.
right, so you can see that the engine mounts are actually mounted onto the uh, onto the chassis of the car or the, the body side of it is. Um, I drilled a second hole that uh, wasn't there. I'm gonna have to put a captive nut into that. I'll work out exactly how I do that later, but uh, for now, uh, it's got one already captive nut that's already in there, the factory one. Um, I did put a captive bolt into these when I modified this subframe um, a while back. Um, that obviously I had to cut off then because it didn't fit with the, the design that I've come up with. The, uh, the, the subframe still has more reinforcing to go into it for those of you who are concerned about that. But for, for now, I've got my, my basic mounts here. I need to now start making up uh, the, a nicely fish-mouthed uh, end of tube to be able to go from this mount to the mounts on the engine. So uh, let's start fish mouthing. All right, so I've been playing around. I've got my two fish mouth ends. So um, they're both in here. And basically what these are going to do, these are one for either side. I've got to cut them to length to actually fit to the plates that I made on the engine. These are going to cap onto the cotton reel mounts that are on the car already and tack onto them. And then the other end has got to be, I've got to adjust the length of them so that it uh, lines up with the plate on the engines that I've made previously. So now it's time to get the engine back in the car, get it all lined up again, and then I can start trimming these to length and tack them in. I've gone through how to make these fish mouth ends before in my uh, in some of my roll cage videos. If you want to go back and watch some of those uh, roll cage videos um, and uh, see how to make them. It's quite handy to know how to make these if you don't have a tube notcher with a hole saw, which I don't, so that's how I made them. Okay, so after a lot of playing around, the engine's back in, it's all lined up, the gearbox is bolted back on again. So now I'm going to trim down that uh, fish mouth piece I have and see if I can actually fit it in the car. Okay, so um, the uh, the pieces are just sitting in there for now, but there is uh, the engine mount with the uh, lots of clearance on the one side, and on the other side. So there we go, we got engine mounts sitting in place on both sides, and the engine is actually sitting on them. Okay, so that actually uh, worked great. They're actually looking really good, uh, nice, decent. They're gonna be nice solid uh, mounts. I still have to tack them together, uh, but I have run out of time. Uh, so uh, I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Alfa Romeo released its latest concept car at the 67 Expo in Montreal. It was a 2 plus 2 coupe with a 1.6 litre engine out of the Giulia Ti and the body was designed by Marcello Gandini for Bertoni. As the concept was unnamed, the press referred to it as the Montreal and the name stuck. The first production cars were not released until three years later and they got a nice upgrade in the engine department with a 2.6 litre dry sump crossplane V8. The engine was derived from the 2 litre version used in the 33 Stradale and the Tipo 33 race cars and it produced 200 horsepower. Stylistically, the standouts were the retractable grills over the headlights and the vents on the B pillar. The knacker duct on the bonnet was not functional and was interestingly just a way to hide the power bulge. At the time the Montreal was more expensive than the E-Type Jag and the 911 and between 1970 and 1977 only 3,917 were produced. All right well I didn't get to finish those engine mounts today but um, I Definitely get back into that next week. I've got the engine mounts and the gearbox mounts obviously to uh, to tidy up So uh, that is uh, it's all good moving forward and uh, we're actually getting there We're gonna get the car in the uh, gonna get the engine in the car at least mounted yeah. Whether it'll run or not that's still a long way down the, <laughs> down the track <laughs> <Different across>. Yes. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please like and subscribe and if you want to see more of Jeff and his adventures a day early join us on patreon and Facebook and Instagram as well. And uh, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.
and it was designed by uh, Matello. Do we do it again? You sure? I can. I said it'd be really good this one. It's the 89th time. Yeah, baby. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I know I dry soap from the Functional. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs>